Hello everyone, uh, welcome on my presentation. I will be talking about the Dreamforce basics for the Salesforce admin today. Uh, my name is Evelina Rapa. I'm working as a Salesforce admin at IPAM and would like to uh, tell you a little bit more about the DevOps processes. So uh, how many of you are working already with the DevOps processes right now? Not so many people, okay. So it's good that we are here right now. So I would like to tell you a little bit more of what the DevOps process is, uh, what are the pillars of the Salesforce DevOps processes, also what can be the benefits for us to implement the best practices for our Salesforce implementations, where can we start, and also I will share some resources with you. This is my favorite sentence, I would say. There is no test like production, and I believe that most of us, probably once in our experience, was doing some changes on production. It could be a little bit better or it could break something. So for sure we are having this experience. Uh, we know that it's not the best practice to do so. There is also the second sentence, which is always problematic, that it works for me. So we are developing the feature, we are sending this to the user, the user is trying this and they are not getting the same results as we are having. So probably there is something not working in the process, something maybe is missed, and we need to go through the whole debug process. So this is the place when the DevOps uh, process can be really helpful for all of us. So I was also looking for the best definition for the DevOps uh, process, and I think that the definition that this is a philosophy that guides software development and prioritize people over processes and processes over tooling, it's the best definition that we can use as a Salesforce admin. So basically, the DevOps builds the culture of trust, collaboration, and continuous improvements. And also by uh, incorporating those practices, uh, we can streamline the processes, we can improve the collaboration, we can also have better implementations overall for um, our programs. So the five pillars of the Salesforce uh, DevOps process. So um, I will start with those three ones, which I believe are crucial for the basics uh, for the Salesforce admin. So this is the version control, backup, and the culture. So version control, um, this is something that it's allowing us to have ability to monitor all of the changes in the system. So we are able to check if we made any changes in the flow or we made any changes in the pick list or whatsoever, we can easily track how the changes happen, who made the changes, and if we will need to revert the, the change that uh, was happening in the system, we can easily do that. I also believe that backup, it's uh, probably the one number one priority because we are focusing as a Salesforce admin on data backups. Well, so we are taking care of the data backups, but we are really thinking about the metadata that we are using. So imagine if you're having the account object and you're having 200 fields there and it's disappearing in one click. So probably to redo this manually, it will take ages. And with implementing the DevOps pro processes and creating the backups for yourself, it can be easily um, bring it back and you can, uh, in a really short time, bring the production to, to the place it was before. And I think that the third one, which is the most important, is the culture. So basically, we are building the strong collaboration between all of the people in our process. So we are start building strong collaboration between the admins that are working on one organization, also with the QA people, with the end user, so everyone is involved in the process and we are building the collaboration and understanding of the whole platform. The other two um, that are important for the Salesforce DevOps processes, it's automation. So there is the uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery. So this is something that can be implemented later on when you're feeling comfortable with already having the basic setup of your DevOps project. Uh, it can help you to have this continuous um, setup for the system that you don't need to make the manual changes. You're just preparing the packages, you're just preparing the changes, and then the tools can, can help you to do this automatically. 
Also with the continuous delivery, uh, it can be partially implemented without the automatization when you're releasing um, the, your changes frequently. So it's a good practice, for example, that even if you're making the minor change, like uh, adding new fields or making changes in the layout, just add this automatically and immediately uh, to the repositorium, and then uh, it will be easier for you to manage that. It will be easier for you to test that instead of like collecting all of the changes that you made over time and just put one change set or one deployment at a time, and you need to test 10 or 15 features at the same time. So the testing is the next one. So this is the part when I know that maybe not everyone is using it. As I was so talking, the production is the best testing environment for <laughs> some of us. But uh, it's a good practice to have the developer sandbox and the testing sandbox. It's, getting, uh, it's giving us additional step but at least you will be able to catch all of the errors or any minor issues before your user will see this on a production. So I also showed you some like graphic representation of how the DevOps process is looking like, more or less. So the blue dots are the main branch. So this will be our production data. This will be our base of the system. And we are having the red dots. And I put uh, D1 and D2, which is basically one developer and the second developer. So in this process, we are making small changes. We are adding this on the go. So we are not collecting a lot of packages, a lot of changes at once. And at any time, we can just merge it to the main branch. And then we will have one source of truth for the whole process. So what are the benefits of using DevOps process? So faster deployments of the changes. So basically, we are having one package. We are getting all of the information in one place. And we don't need to think too much of like if we forgetting about some elements, or maybe if we are creating the change set, if for sure we are having everything added in one place. So using the DevOps uh, process and adding everything on a go uh, and using the continuous development uh, practice, it's allowing us for uh, faster implementation. It's also reduced the risk of the de deployment errors. So as I mentioned previously, um, when we are using the change sets, we can easily forget, for example, to add the profile. And then when we will put this on production, the user will, will have an issue to see this field because we forgot to update this information. So once using this and having one big repository of all of the uh, elements in our system, it will just make it much easier. As I was also mentioning before, it's creating this collaborative environment for all of the people. So it's easy for the admins to talk to each other. You also have the, uh, all the time the communication with the uh, testing, um, with the QA people, or also if you're giving the features to be tested for the end user. So also you're getting instant feedback of all of the changes that you're doing. Uh, there is also consistency out across all environments. It's easy to keep all of the environments the same. So as we are having our production and we are making our changes of on developer sandbox, and for example, every developer is having their own sandbox, it's easy for us to have one version of the system and quickly deploy it to other sandboxes. So then, for example, after the big release, we can just put everything, uh, everyone to the same state of the system. Um, and there is also rapid rollback uh, capabilities. So this is the situation I was mentioning before. So imagine that half of the system is gone. Something happened, you don't have your object, you don't have your fields, you don't have your processes. So if you don't have this documented and you would like to do it manually, it will probably take a long time and it will stop the business from working. So having everything in one place, it's allowing us to bring all of the processes and bring all of the information um, really, really uh, quick. So where to start? So um, in one of the resources I, I will share with you, you will find this graphic. Uh, so basically, it's not said that you need to just start right now and redesign all of your processes immediately, that you need to use all of the tools, you need to use all of the automation. So basically, this is not a sprint. It's a marathon. So if you didn't use the DevOps processes before, 
it's better to start slow. So it's better to create the backup first. So be familiar with the system, be familiar with all of the um, tools that are needed for this, and you don't need to put any extra um, money for this. So you can just get familiar with the metadata. You can also learn how the metadata is built together because, for example, when we are just working with the chain sets, we need to get used to some other elements that will be happening with the DevOps process and how, for example, developing um, will change for specific uh, elements. So, for example, it's good to start with the venture control and with creating the, the backup later um, to add the elements of deployment, to add this element when we are, we are putting the changes, that we are committing the changes, and then trying to merge. So basically, you need to make it as a learning path for you and just try to click it through and see how what will be the best way for you to use it. When, when you will get to the expert stage and you will have a bigger team, so you can start to think about the automations. So then you can implement some tool which will allow you to do automated stuff. So you don't need to worry about the deployments. You don't need to worry about taking care of all of the process. You will be just committing your changes and the system will be able uh, to do this for you. And of course, there is a last stage when basically we can automate a lot of things. Um, out of, uh, like, we can just automate most of the stuff. So, this is also one place where you can start. Um, so, this is the trailhead uh, Visual Studio Code for Salesforce development. It sounds scary. And I know that for Salesforce admin at the very beginning, to hear that something is connected to the development, it can be scary. But this is a good practice to connect your org to the Visual Studio Code, to try to retrieve your data, that also you will be able to see how the metadata is built in Salesforce. And for example, just go and check the field on Acon that you're having, like a status field, how it looks in Salesforce, and how it looks on the metadata um, in the system. And later, when you will get deeper, when you will get more information, you will be able to to make the next steps and feel more familiar with that. There is also two more things, uh, two resources. And this is also sounds scary. So architect journey sounds super scary. At the beginning for me, it was also like, I'm an admin, I will not be able to do that. But overall, in this trail mix, uh, you're having a lot of information, the basic information and uh, theory about the whole development lifecycle uh, management. So you will also get some, some basics, you will get the best practices from there, and you will be able to see how, how it can be implemented inside Salesforce. And one thing which is like super interesting, uh, and I strongly recommend you to do, it's a DevOps Launchpad. So DevOps lamp, uh, on DevOps Launchpad, you're having the design trainings for basic of DevOps. So you will go step by step of how it works, how the Git works, why we are doing that, what is the best practice, and then you will be certified. So this is also additional uh, perk of doing and using this resource. So thank you so much for um, being here and here uh, listening to this presentation. Um, and here is my slides about the uh, survey. So as everyone was mentioning previously, there is an option to win some amazing prizes. You can just scan the code and make, uh, put some information and give feedback about my session. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for watching. We would love to get your opinion on this content, so please leave us some feedback on the comment section below. If you did like this content, give that like button a tap. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the Salesforce Admin's YouTube channel. If you want to learn more about being a Salesforce admin in general, head on over to admin.salesforce.com. Thanks again.